Hello, all you beautiful people in Webtown. Welcome back to Crypto Comics for Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month. And today is a very special day for anyone who grew up in the 1990s because you undoubtedly remember the intricate relationship that Todd McFarlane's Spawn had with Rob Liefeld's Chapel from Youngblood. Today, we are going to discuss this relationship and the life and death of Bruce Stinson, better known as the man they call Chapel. So, we're gonna get right into it. This takes place in the pages of Spawn number 12 and Youngblood number 10. It's gonna be exciting. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing. This is uh, obviously written and drawn by Todd McFarlane and very thoroughly written by Todd. And uh, we're gonna skip to the relevant portions, you know, as Spawn is unraveling what happened in his life, remembering his wedding day, slowly the memories come flooding back. Uh, Jason Wynn, you know, obviously a, a dirty bastard. He goes to visit Wanda's mother who is blind, but she remembers his voice like it was yesterday. And obviously we got just a ton of stuff to, we could do. We could talk about, we could go through this whole thing. It would take me an hour to read this whole thing because, well, I mean, that's just, you know, how Todd writes. He's a very thorough writer. Oh, there's Blood Wolf. I know you want to see it. You can't help yourself. There you go, Blood Wolf. Check out uh, the review of Darker Image number one here on Crypto Comics to find out more about Blood Wolf. And, you know, we're just gonna flip back. We gotta go back and back and and back and back. And this, this homeless guy tries to put the mask on and it just sucks down over his face and it's gonna eat him alive, basically. Anyway, where were we? Oh, that's right. Spawn is suddenly gonna have some massive flashbacks. Al's mind explodes. He believes it's the alcohol. He's been drinking with the bums. It's not. Then suddenly, the pictures become clear. The clues have been there all the time. He had thought the coffin was a reminder of his death. In a way, it was. But it also meant so much more. The flag. That's the missing piece of the puzzle. And the skull. It signifies death. Not the Grim Reaper, as his instincts were telling him but the face of his killer. Newly unblocked images come pouring into his memory's void. He sees the face of death springing forth like an evil weed to choke off the things around it. Then suddenly, finally, it makes sense. All of it. The flag didn't signify patriotism. It was the killer's employer. The face of death was nothing more than a mask, or more specifically, makeup. And the final piece, it now seems so obvious. How could I have been so blind, thinks Al. It's not my wedding. It's his name. It wasn't a church. Damn it. It wasn't a church. It was chapel. No. So there you go. The revelation. The chapel was the killer of Al Simmons, the man who became Spawn. Now, we fast forward to Youngblood, issue number 10. This is from December of 1994, and it is some of uh, Rob Liefeld's finest art. This looks more reminiscent of Todd's art than it does Rob's. It's really nice. What's it gonna be, Spawn? Either you tell me what I wanna know, and use your tricks to save all your little friends I shot tonight, or stop me forever and run the risk of losing what little power I figure you got left. See, Chapel's murdered all these homeless people. It's your choice, pal. Some choice. I don't even know what you're doing here, Chapel. Surprise, surprise. I'm here to learn your secrets, Al, baby. I mean, come on, man. It's not every day one of the guys I wasted in the line of duty comes back to life. I want to know how you did it. Tell me everything. You don't know what you're asking, Chapel. Where I've been, even you don't want to go there. How about you let me be the judge of that, Simmons? You just open your mouth and sing. Otherwise, I'm going to get back to waging my own personal war on homelessness against your buddies. And you know what an itchy trigger finger I got. No, no more bloodshed. There's been enough killing here tonight. I'll tell you what you want to know. I'll tell you what you need to know. For brevity's sake, I'll skip over the part where my best friend murders me in cold blood on the killing fields of Botswana. 
See spawns number 12 and 13 for details. And we did skip issue number 13 a spawn because I, I don't own it. It's not in my collection. I wish I, I wish I had it to share with you, but I, I sadly don't, Kryptonites. Nonetheless, for brevity's sake, we'll skip over that, like Al says. After all, I think we're both pretty familiar with that part of the story. Where our experiences differ is in what happened next. I don't know about you, Chapel, but I never gave much thought to heaven or hell before I died. But when I awoke to find myself on the other side of that all-too-thin veil that separates life from death, it definitely wasn't the pearly gates I found myself kneeling before. No, I was in hell, Chapel. And where I couldn't have given a toss what happened to my soul when I was still among the living, I suddenly found myself pleading for a second chance to live to love, to hold Wanda and tell her everything's gonna be all right. I got my second chance, but not on my terms. Five years had passed before I returned, and in that time, my wife remarried and bore a child with another man. I always wanted a child, Bruce, but that was the one thing I could never give her. In a way, this is almost worse than hell. Save it for someone who cares, Al. You got a second shot at life, and all you're doing is wallowing in self-pity. You're pathetic, Simmons. You beat death, buddy. And that means I can do it too. Some 2,000 miles from the concrete jungle in New York City lies Baffin Island. And it is here, in the wilds of Canada's Northwest Territories, that the lines of battle have been drawn. Silence. Task. Bad Rock. Nice Saber. Black Rock. The Cybernetic Legion of the Power Mad Maddock. And Warwolf. I know what you're thinking, it's Sabretooth. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is Sabretooth. We don't need that part. It's not important to what we're talking about today. So we just keep skipping through here until we get, until we get to, I mean, look at this art. Oh shit, he cut his head off. Whoa, great. Yeah, see, I mean, you, you might want to actually pick this up and read it. Oh, but one second, let me just turn so we can admire that beautiful piece of art right there. Hot dang is right. Yummy, yummy. Keep going. Here we go. Back into it now. New York City. Don't come any closer, Simmons. You done good by me so far. I'd hate to have to pop a cap in that ugly head of yours now. Bruce, you don't know what you're saying. This is wrong. Maybe it was wrong for you, Al. But for me, this is my ticket to ride, buddy. I want this. My life's been nothing but one long downward spiral for months now, Simmons. Considering the gravy train I was riding as part of Youngblood, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. But when my good friend Jason Wynn started screwing with me, when he told me the agency had been infecting me with a specialized strain of the HIV virus over the length of my career, it was like the other shoe finally dropped. And we talked about that in Young Blood Strike File number one through three. You can also check out Blood Strike seven through 10, apparently. We're not gonna do that, obviously, because I'm not a big fan of Blood Strike and don't own them. As far as footwear goes, Al, that was one heavy sucker. It came close to clobbering me. Wynn had me shuffled in and out of that joke-ass Blood Strike outfit, and I didn't think I'd ever pull myself out of the hole I was in. The way I looked at it, I was just a dead man waiting to happen. It wasn't until later I figured everything out for myself in one divine moment of clarity. If you had really come back from the dead, then so could I. Thing with me though, Al, I could care less about love and happiness. You can have that crap. I got bigger plans for my return. Plans that will change everything forever. Bruce. I'm begging you, man. Listen to reason. Forget it, Spawny. I'm done listening. I'm done talking. I do want to thank you, though. Without you, I'd never have fulfilled my true destiny. I'd never have realized that my life wouldn't truly begin until after my death. Click. Suddenly, everything slows to the speed of a crawl. The trigger is depressed. The trigger pin strikes a circuit within the base of the gun. A radiant burst of energy flies out of the chamber and immediately finds a welcome home in Chapel's temple. By the time the left side of Chapel's skull is shattered by the force of the blast, 
Al Simmons could swear he spent a lifetime watching the grisly ordeal. In truth, it's only been a split second. And there we have the death of the man they call Chapel. Now I know what you're wondering. What happened? Did he come back? Did he come back as a hell spawn? No, no he didn't. He came back as something much worse, much, much worse. And we're gonna talk about what he came back as tomorrow, as this journey into the life, death, and demonic resurrection of Chapel continues here on Crypto Comics, Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month. If you appreciate Crypto Comics, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe and hit that ding dong for notifications. And if you, if you, really, if you really truly care about your boy Crypto, go to megawattcomic.com and support my new comic book, Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun, available right now on Kickstarter. We are, we are desperate to hit our goal by Halloween so that we can provide beautiful people just like yourself with a fun comic you don't have to worry about sharing with your kids, but that will also entertain you with a complex story about a coven of bloodthirsty vampires who have a taste for the blood of young immigrant women. Only you can help my comic get successfully funded. So please go to megawattcomic.com and support Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun today. And I will see you tomorrow to talk more about Chapel for Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month here on Crypto Comics.